So you got your brand new hardtail and you've started to progress your riding, but where to start upgrading? Well, in this week's worth of video, I'm gonna be going through my top five upgrades for your entry level hardtail and show you how I got from this to this. Hey everyone, Phil from Bikes Online here, and as you guys know, my current ride is a Marin Bobcat Trail 4, which I consider to be one of the best value hardtails to get into some real trail riding. But as you can see, I've upgraded it quite a bit since I got it. But before we dive in, I posted a poll a few weeks ago about what you guys thought were the top five upgrades for entry level hardtails, and this is what you guys voted for. So interesting to see the hydraulic disc brakes were actually the top, and that was closely followed by 1% by a dropper post. But my order's a little bit different, so let's dive in and see what I thought my top five upgrades were. When it comes to bang for your buck, nothing quite beats upgrading your contact points. And while your tires connect you to the trail, how you connect with your bike is just as important. So that's gonna be your grips, saddle, and your pedals as well. And surprisingly enough, most budget bikes really get this wrong. But things are getting better. And the perfect example of this on my Marin Bobcat Trail 4, it came with a short stem and wide bars. So I think it had 780 millimeter wide bars and a short 45 millimeter stem, which really puts you in a confident position on the trail. So a wider bar and shorter stem will give you a little bit more stability in the descent as well as a little bit more control too. But the one you really need to get away from is those basic entry level plastic pedals that every bike comes with. These are really designed for commuting or just really a test ride on a mountain bike. And other than poor technique for riders starting out, slipping a pedal, which is mostly responsible by these pedals, is the main reason you're gonna crash. So fortunately enough, there's some great value pedals out in the market right now. And something like nylon composite pedals, like the Entity PP20s that I've got on my bike at the moment, they provide so much grip. So they're gonna be really light, which is good too. And because they're a nylon composite, they're really strong and those metal pins are super grippy as well. And the good thing about a lot of these composite pedals is they replicate the models of the higher end stuff. So the alloy and magnesium pedals. So you're pretty much getting all the performance compared to the more expensive pedals with these composite pedals. So definitely check those out. I'll leave a link in the description. Having a comfortable saddle is vital too. Something like padded bike shots will help, but making sure the saddle actually fits you is vital. So you can do this by getting a specific saddle fit, or you can just try out a few different saddles. If your friends have bikes, you can sit on theirs, see how it feels. But the first thing you'll notice when you get on the bike for a first time after your first ride, your butt's gonna be sore. So definitely get a saddle that fits you if the stock one doesn't and some padded bike shorts as well. And the last one is grips. A lot of budget bikes will still come with slide on grips and you notice after these get in the rain or if they get a little bit wet or moisture in there, they're gonna spin straight away and that's gonna be another reason why you might crash. So getting a good set of lock on grips is gonna improve your experience and safety on the trail too. And a good thing about these contact points, they're a great affordable way to customize your bike and really make it your own. So something like these fun lock-on grips that we have that come in all these different colors, it's gonna be a great way to kind of customize it and make your bike your own. And next up, we have no surprise here, it was the same as you guys voted at number two, and that's dropper posts. And these are an absolute game changer on the trail. While a good fork, solid geometry, and grippy ties is gonna increase your confidence on the trail, nothing's gonna crush it quite like having your saddle sky high and going over a drop or a rock roll just to have yourself fall over the bars. So the old school way of fixing this before you started your descent was you just put your saddle down. But if your trail is going up and down all the time, this is an absolute hassle. And this is why dropper posts are an absolute game changer. And the dropper post eliminates this problem entirely. It allows you to seamlessly flow from your climbing position down to that descending position with a simple press of a lever. So when you're descending, you can put it down, which allows you to easily jump manual and get your weight off the back of the bike. And when you want to climb again, simply press it and then you'll be in that optimal climbing position again. So a great affordable option is a Transex dropper, which comes on a lot of our bikes and we now stock them as well. The main thing is you just wanna make sure it fits your bike. So definitely measure twice when you're doing this because they do come in different lengths. And if your bike has bottle cage mounts on the seat tube, which a lot of entry level hardtails do, you just wanna make sure there's no interference there with the insertion depth. Next up, we have tires and let's face it, most budget tires suck. And having a good set of tires under you is super important because as I said earlier, this is the one part of the bike that connects you to the trail. Well, at least if you don't crash. And there's plenty of good quality tires to pick from, but you wanna make sure you get the right one. So there's lightweight, fast, rolling XC tires, it's great for kind of XC riding and lighter trail riding if you want to cover a lot of miles. And then there's super grippy downhill tires with super aggressive casings that has lots of puncture protection that are super tacky. So you just want to make sure you get in the right one. So definitely subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing a full overview of our Maxxis tires that we stock so I can help you make sure that you get the right Maxxis tire for your riding. 
On my Bobcat Trail, as you can see, I went for Maxxis. The tires that I went with is the 2.4 Maxxis Recon. I really like these tires. They've got a decent volume there, so they're nice and comfortable and provide a lot of grip. And then the tread pattern is nice and balanced as well. So it's fast rolling for kind of more that XC stuff, but there's decent edge tread on there, so it's great for trail riding too. So if I'm looking for a do-it-all tire for XC and trail riding, the Recon's one of my favorites. But something I definitely do recommend upgrading as well is going to tubeless too. So getting a tubeless set of tires, sealant, valves, making sure those rims are taped as well. Getting a good tubeless setup is gonna give you lots more grip because you can run lower pressures and extra puncture protection as well. And another benefit, it's also lighter too. But I'll also leave some of our tubeless kits in the description as well, so you can check those out too. Moving on to upgrading the fork, and while this might be the most expensive upgrade, it's gonna really allow you to start attacking the descents compared to any of these other upgrades. And like my Marine Bobcat Trail when I took it for its first ride, I noticed that the bike was super capable with those wide bars, short stem, really capable geometry, so it's got a slacker head angle and more roomy reach. But the one thing I did notice when I started going over the chunky stuff and when I was going really fast, the fork was definitely starting to hold it back. Oh, that was a bit janky. So these bikes really want you to push them, so it's definitely worthwhile having a fork that can keep up. A good analogy would be something like a sports car with terrible tires. You've got a great chassis and the engine's there, you just need those tires to make it the whole package, and for me, that was what the fork provided. So a modern air fork like the Malzocchi Z2 that I've got my Marin, it provides a lot more adjustability, it's a lot more supple too, and definitely more support, but it also provides you with a lot more tunability there. So, so you can tune it with volume spaces, change the pressure, the compression and the rebound as well. So there's plenty of adjustability, which compared to the entry level coil fork, it only really had preload. So you definitely got to notice those benefits on the modern air fork. But a top tip here, when you are looking at selecting your first mountain bike, if you haven't already, I would definitely recommend getting one with a tapered head tube. This is going to give you with a lot more options to upgrade your fork in the future. So something like a Polygon Extrata that we sell is a great option. Or even the Marine Bobcat Trail, it does have a straight head tube, but it is oversized. So if you change the lower headset cup to an external one, you can run a tapered fork as I have done here. So, so I definitely recommend looking into that. So moving on to the last upgrade and controversial opinion here, a one by drivetrain would be the last thing that I'd upgrade out of the five. All the prior upgrades to me, I noticed a huge difference when I was attacking the trail, but a one by drivetrain is definitely a creature comfort for me. But I was fortunate enough that when we were in, it came with a one by drivetrain from factory. But there's definitely no denying the benefits of a one by drivetrain. Ditching that front derailleur makes life a lot easier in terms of maintenance, simplicity with the shifting, and it cleans up your bars as well. And then also with a one by drivetrain, you've got that narrow wide chain ring and the clutch on the rear derailleur as well. So that's gonna really improve chain retention and it's gonna quiet down your drivetrain a lot, especially over the chunky terrain. So there's my top five. But Phil, you're missing something. Where's those hydraulic disc brakes? Well, most entry level mountain bikes these days either come with cable actuated disc brakes or hydraulic disc brakes. And for me, the other upgrades would probably come first, but it would definitely be a quick upgrade after I've done everything else, especially if they do come with those cable actuated disc brakes. But especially with those cable actuated disc brakes, you're really gonna notice a difference when they're adjusted properly. So if they aren't adjusted well, your braking obviously is gonna suck. But getting them adjusted well, you'll actually notice that you get half decent performance from them. But if your bike does come with rim brakes, it would probably be the first upgrade that I'd do going to disc brakes. And in short, hydraulic disc brakes will give you a little bit more power and better modulation too. So they'll really allow you to start attacking the descents. Especially with how capable your bike is gonna be once you've done all these upgrades, you really need some brakes that can stop you. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know what your top five upgrades are, or if you've upgraded your hardtail, let me know what you've done. And as always guys and girls, thanks for watching. See ya.